Hello, we are from Honey Sweet Component. Now we want to talk about mobile content. This is our focus area. The first one is content and copyright protection. The second one is mobile payment system. And the last one is mobile advertising system. First, content and copyright protection. Introduction Many sites provide an official content that easily to find such as ebook, music, film, software apps, and etc. Many unofficial contents on the internet that you can download it as free and we used to the transferring data between mobile devices that has been our habit every day. DRM or Digital Rights Management is a systematic approach to copyright protection for digital media and the purpose is to prevent an authorized distribution of digital media and restrict the ways consumers can copy content they've purchased and uh, typically DRM is implemented by embedding code that prevent copying how it works first take any content such as images software books or publishings, documents, audio, or even video. Second, package with appropriate security, such as encryption partners, DRM partners, or PKI, trusted environment. Third, trade with chosen currency, payment, customer information, or PKI ident identification. And fourth, allow the content to be used in PC, phone, PDI players, and TV. Is of use. The cost shouldn't be prohibitive, scalable to run an Amazon or Yahoo, adaptive to change as DRM encryption payment and e-commerce technologies come and go easy to implement and use for both publisher and user access to information should be easy but remain secure there are five open standards first drm standards second w3c standards Third, e-business standards. Fourth, UGDI SDMI. Fifth, JFDI. So DRM is a business model that exists to protect the content and also give the rights of a content creator. So the content creator can protect the content by people that want to steal it or even want to make the same thing with them because it will violate copyright and can be subject to criminal law two general technique types first restrictive licensing agreements and encryption Second, scrambling of expressive material and embedding of attack. John Van Tassel, 2006. There are three DRM's distribution scenarios. First, time best. It's like a limited time at a certain time to be played the content. And second, device based it's like content connected to some particular devices and it cannot be played in another software that doesn't have license or permission from the vendor and the third is subscription based 
It's like content that users downloaded can be played as long as the users still subscribe the services. The so, DRM system can be implemented on applications, games, music, movies, and ebook. And the DRS system itself has its standard that have been imposed by the open mobile application and uh, there are three organizations whose members consist of first mobile phone manufacturing industry second manufacturing mobile system and third mobile phone network technology operators there are three methods that used by DRM 1.0. The first is forward lock that used to subscribe ringtones and wallpapers to protect against copying the, the file. And second is combined delivery. It usually used to a uh, written using DRM writes expression language that contains information on the number and the time and separate delivery where content and rights objects shipped in separate packages. And this is the illustration of DRM 1.0. There are four methods that used by DRM 2.0. First, public key infrastructure security system. Second, right object acquisition protocol. And third, DRM content format. And the last one is right expression language. This is the overview of how DRM 1.0 works and this is the differences between DRM 1.0 and DRM 2.0 based on application mode, domain support, mobile phone support, security, and deployment. The business model that can be applied, cheap and easy, digital content to promote traditional product, this intermediation and give it away, and the artist freedom voucher. So we are going to talk about the mobile payment system. A mobile payment or M payment may be defined for our purposes as any payment where a mobile device is used to initiate authorize and confirm an exchange of financial value in return for goods and services. Payment models carried out on transaction and digital services or goods such as ringtones, music, video, online game subscription or items, wallpapers, and several other digital goods. Transportation tickets such as airline tickets, train tickets, bus parking, and tickets for other services, and also books and magazines. Mobile payment. Um, here are some mobile payment. There is um, one of them is market provisioning, and you can all see the examples here beside the name. There are also deposit lending and capital rising. For example, is kitabisa.com where you can always uh, put your charity in it, and then there is also investment and risk management. Um, there is also payment clearing and settlement like ePay, BRE or other examples are stated here. Next is the type of mobile payment. There is premium SMS, direct mobile billing, um, there is also NFC, there is also direct carrier or bank cooperation and mobile web payment. This is the examples of what I've just told before. And then this is the business mobile, the business model of mobile payment. 
So the focus of the initiation of the payment is divided into two parts. There is customer, there is consumer initiated payment and also merchant initiated payment. Based on service providers, mobile payment can be divided into several models. The first one is operator-centric model. The second one is bank-centric model. And there is also collaboration model. And the last is peer-to-peer -peer model. There are two factors that infected the mobile pay payment. The first one is promote factors. And the second one is inhibit factors. For the promote factors, it over more added value to customers or to consumers, to merchants, to telecom operators, financial institution, and several other participants of payment ecosystem. Um, however, for the inhibit factors, the complexity of the ecosystem that requires the cooperation of several parties and the cooperation between the parties is still like those parties are banking, merchant, sales, telecommunication operators, and others. So, the next one is electronic money. Electronic money or digital cash have many components. Money have four kinds. There are coin bill, bearer bonds, gold silver, and weight qualities. And digital cash have two kinds. The first one is two types of e-money that consists of identify e-money, anonymous e-money, or digital cash, and Ideal digital cash system consists of six components or six kinds. There are independency, security, privacy, offline payment, transferability, and divisibility. And there are four protocol consideration. The first one is consumer, business, financial, and government, and technical challenges. So, for the last one is advertising mobile system, and here is the definition of mobile advertising. Mobile advertising is a media advertising service that uses mobile phone or cell phone. It's delivery by utilizing smartphone technology or other mobile devices. By utilizing the GPS or the global positioning system, advertising mobile can determine the special behavior of its target consumers. Mobile advertising offers a way to advertise by means of good, effective, and efficient called as narrowcasting in advertising through mobile media. There are six types of advertising mobile such as SMS, MMS, banner ads, mobile video ads, mobile games ads, and jingle before facemail. And here is the example of screenshot of advertising mobile. Top up alerts like branding, balance inquiries like interactive content, click to call, person to person, click to VAP. Then the potential for advertising. Smartphone penetration in the Asia Pacific region is booming. In fact, penetration in a number of markets in the region is approaching saturation point. Having already Eclipsed penetration levels in the US and many European nations. Asia Pacific smartphone penetration is highest in Hong Kong and Singapore at 87%, followed by Malaysia 80%, Australia 75%, and China 71%. Penetration in developing Asia Pacific markets while trailing the more developed markets in the region is gaining traction. Thailand's smartphone penetration is at 49% followed by Indonesia 23%, India 18%, and the Philippines 15%. The reference from indotelco.com year 2013. So, Nielsen's Telecom and Technology Practice Director in Southeast Asia, North Asia, and Pacific Sagar, Pet says the growth in connected device ownership across Asia Pacific has been staggering in recent years. Nonetheless, he notes, while the growth is expected to begin leveling out consumers, 
use of connected device will continue to evolve and expand presenting fast opportunities for organization to engage with consumers and an almost ubiquitous platform for the next one how to choose the right target for our ads here is the consider some of the following factors such as interest or hobby behavior demography survey of the user location the type of mobile devices crm database and context and keywords for the last one is ecosystem and advertising mobile business model such as sms aggregators search carriers at gininens advertiser at networks publisher oriented mobile context optimizer and career oriented vendors or networks thank you for hearing our explanation and thank you for watching this video bye bye